welcome. These are the basic supplies that you will need to get through this course. I'll talk a little bit about them, but there is also a, a PDF that you can download uh, on, on the site. So you could print that and take it to the store and have a human being help you if you'd like, or you can buy them all online at Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama or wherever. There are a variety of places, but those are two good ones. So this is the paint. I tend to buy Gamlin paint. I think it's a really, a really great paint and I like their customer service. Uh, but you can also keep an eye out for paints at flea markets or garage sales. Um, you can buy student grade paints, which are perfectly fine at this point. What is really important is that you, you're not afraid of using the paint. Oil paints can be expensive. And uh, if, you're, if you're always worried about, you know, what that dollop of paint might be costing you, then it sort of just sucks all the joy out of oil painting. So I would prefer that you buy student grade paints and you paint freely and have more fun with it. The colors that I start with and I want you all to start with are titanium white by a large tube because you'll go through a lot of it. I use a cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow hue. I buy an orange for convenience, but we can make the orange with our yellow and red. Um, I also buy a red, uh, cadmium red hue. Cadmium red hue is fine. I buy an ultramarine blue and I buy I buy two colors that I use a lot uh, to create my darks. I use an alizarin crimson and a phthalo green. Mix them together and they, they make these really beautiful darks. For the first exercise that we do, you're going to need a little bit of black paint. So buy a very small tube of black and then you'll probably never use it again. Um, but you'll need it for the first go around. <clears throat> I also buy a transparent earth orange which is a beautiful transparent paint. I use it to tone all my canvases and we'll show you how to do that down the line. And I also buy a yellow ochre, which we can make, but it's kind of there for convenience. You'll also need a palette knife. I tend to like these long, skinny metal ones. Uh, I can move a lot of paint with them. Uh, they're flexible. They're fun to use. You really only need one palette knife. So get yourself a, get yourself a palette knife. I also use a medium. The medium makes the paint just a little bit more slick. It makes it dry a little bit faster. I use uh, Neomaglip by Gamlin. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but um, I'm with a whole lot of other people. Uh, you can also use Liquin, which works. Okay, you'll also need a brush cleaner. Holbein makes a great brush cleaner that will not leak on you. So if you plan on painting outside, you can throw it in your backpack and off you go. It'll stay, it'll stay contained in there, which is important. Uh, the brush cleaners have a little basket on the inside and you rub your brush along there and the sediment comes off the brush and it goes through the holes and into the bottom of the brush cleaner. And then when you're ready to clean it, you just pull out the basket, you pour off the clean mineral spirits, you wipe out the sediment, and then you pour the clean mineral spirits back in. So your mineral spirits don't wind up down the drain, you don't waste any, um, they're really, they're great containers. Um, if you don't want to invest in a Holbein, um, they also make these jars. This has been in my studio for way too long and I can't actually get the lid off, but this is just a glass jar with a metal ring on the bottom of it. And you sort of just rub your brush along that too. This will work perfectly fine, um, but you wouldn't want to throw it in a backpack and go out in the field and paint. So, so that's the brush cleaner. Inside the brush cleaner, I put Gamlin Mineral Spirits. They're a little bit less toxic than others. Um, you could also uh, travel with Gamsol. It has a lower flash point. As long as you print off the, the manufacturer's specs and you pack an unopened can, you can take it on an airplane, which I have done many times, happily. Uh, you also need a couple brushes. You don't need too many. Start with six. You can buy... Um, you can buy sable brushes, which are very soft and very expensive and lovely. You can buy um, uh, synthetic brushes, which will work fine in this, in this case. You can also buy bristle brushes, which are uh, generally my favorite. I usually use bristle brushes. Uh, I would say get a small and a medium size. Uh, there, are, there are numbers on them. So this is a two and this is a four. This is a filbert brush. It has a little bit of a rounded tip. Uh, which I love. I love these. I use these brushes more than more than anything. Um, that's a filbert. These are flats. They're flat, and these are rounds. They're rounded points. 
that's enough to get us going. Um, so six brushes, we should be set. Um, paper towels, they come in a variety. I use Viva. They will absorb more paint, more mineral spirits, more of the mess than any other paper towel I have ever tried out there. I highly recommend Viva paper towels. And then you need a couple canvases so we can make some art on them. I would suggest canvas panels. Uh, eight by 10 is fine for what we're doing to start with. It's more important that we paint more small pieces than fewer large pieces. You'll have more fun, you'll learn quicker. Um, I've already toned this one and I'll show you how we do that um, when we move on, but you could buy a pack of, you know, a six pack of these at Michael's or Jerry's or anywhere. So just, you might try a couple different kinds. Some of them have lots of texture, some of them are pretty smooth. Get a variety and then you'll, you'll know what you like. You get to try it out. Try out a couple different things. We also need a palette to mix our paint on and uh, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. I use a glass palette. Took a piece of gator board, uh, neutrally toned. Mine is kind of a brown gator board. I put a piece of thick glass over it and I taped it around the edges and that created a lovely palette for me. It allows me to mix large piles of paint uh, it also is, uh, can be kind of convenient if you have a busy life, you realize you're late, you're supposed to meet somebody, you run out the studio door and the paint dries on there, you can sort of scrape it up the next day. So I love my glass palette. Um, depending on the easel that you buy, sometimes easels come with a little wooden palette. Those are great too. They're always kind of colored neutral. You can also buy a, a Gray Matters paper palette, which is it's just a it's sort of a, a slick surface. It's gray, very neutral in color. When you're done, you just tear it off and toss it. So um, that can be very convenient if you like that. Uh, the advantage to a glass palette is I leave my piles of paint out. They stay wet for several days in a row. So um, uh, that's why I like glass. So okay, we have our paint, our, our palette knife, our brushes, our cleaner, our paper towels, our canvas. Um, we're gonna talk about easels in the next little clip. Uh, and then I think we're ready to paint. We'll start mixing some color and we'll put it on the canvas.